This week's episode of our show has been sponsored by the Grim Hollow Monster Grimoire, which is now available for pre-order. This book by Ghostfire Gaming is packed with over 400 monsters inspired by dark fantasy and gothic horror. Kelly and I love dark fantasy, and this book is offering an amazing bestiary of horrific creatures, abominations, and undead monstrosities inspired by your favorite tales of grim, dark, dreary monster tales. Not only that, but this book is going to contain rules for how to harvest monster parts and the crazy items that you can make with those parts. Also, the book is going to be packed with tons of great advice for dungeon masters on how to make the most of these monsters in your adventures and encounters. The book is coming off the heels of an amazingly successful Kickstarter earlier earlier this year, and if you missed out on that original Kickstarter, now is your chance to get your order in. So check the links below to pre-order your copy of the Grim Hollow Monster Grimoire, brought to you by Ghostfire Games. And now, on to this week's episode. Greetings! My name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for DMs. We upload new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Today, we are taking a look at how to play a Battlesmith in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. This unique subclass for the Artificer was introduced in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and is a very unique spin on the Artificer because you get to build a mechanical companion that is really potent in battle that gives you a lot of different options for how to play an Artificer and I think is one of the, the really flexible uh, artificer uh, subclasses out there. This one in particular offers so much flexibility and when you combine the artificer build options with things like the infusion choices that you get, the feats that you can choose as you level up, and the spell options from the artificer spell list, you can make really interesting and diverse builds with a artificer battlesmith. So Kelly and I have actually both built our own Battlesmith Artificers that we're going to share with you today. We're going to walk you through the builds at 3rd level, a snapshot at 10th level, and a snapshot at 16th level, going over the feats, infusions, and spells that we take at each turn. These are single class builds, so we've just gone pure Artificer all the way. Although I will say with both of our builds, I think that there is an interesting case to be made for taking a couple levels of fighter. Yeah. Um, there, so there might be some interesting multi-class potential with, with either of these options, but we focused on just the pure build for today. There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get rolling. So, Kelly, what did you choose for lineage and ability scores for your Battlesmith? So, I went with the Warforged for my lineage. Oh. I thought that the idea of a Battlesmith who is a Warforged who actually builds the armor and infusions onto themselves is a really cool concept. So I really like that idea. So with my Warforged, I gained a plus two to constitution and I took my plus one in strength. Now that might seem like an interesting choice, but you'll see where I'm going with this in a moment. For my ability scores, I took my highest ability score in intelligence. So we're using our standard array, yeah. which is 17, 15, 13, 12, 10, eight. So 17 in intelligence, 15 in constitution, 13 in strength, 12 in Wisdom, 10 in Dexterity, and 8 in Charisma. He's not going to be a Charmer, but he's going to have purpose on the battlefield. <laughs> um, I went with the good old-fashioned Variant Human for, for me. Um, I did a very similar ability score spread to you, um, but I switched the Strength and Dexterity around. Um, I have a feeling that you're going to be up close and personal, and I'm going to be keeping my distance with these builds. Two of the great <laughs> options for a Battlesmith. Yeah, because what I'm going to do with my Variant Human is I'm going to have 17 Intelligence, 15 Constitution, 13 Dexterity, 12 in my Wisdom as well, 10 in my Strength, and 8 in my Charisma. So again, these, these, these guys are going to be like, like, like that rude grease monkey. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, yeah. Um, that that is more gruff and you know trust their their trusty hound more than they would ever trust uh, another person. But um, with with my battlesmith, because I'm a variant human, I get to take a feat at level one, and I'm gonna take gunner. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I see where you're going with this. Uh, yeah, so this was a new feat introduced in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything that gives you proficiency in firearms. Um, you get a plus one bonus to your dexterity. Um, you um, also get to ignore the loading property of firearms. And you also don't have disadvantage on ranged attacks when you're within five feet of a hostile creature. So this feat is very similar to Crossbow Expert, except instead of getting an attack as a bonus action, you get plus one to your dexterity. 
the reason why that's going to be important is once we have our steel defender, I'm going to be using my bonus action to command and control my steel defender. There is a case for going with crossbow expert, and if your DM doesn't allow firearms, maybe I would take crossbow expert instead. But I, but I'm gonna, we're 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 gonna be wielding a musket with this character. So, awesome. <laughs> well, you're out there with your musket. My character is going up close and personal. I've given them half plate and a shield and a warhammer, so they are running up and smashing people with their warhammer in close combat next to their steel defender. And as we build up the character, this concept of being next to the steel defender is going to become more and more potent as it moves forward. It's going to be a little bit interesting for you because you're not going to be proficient in that war hammer until you get to level three and actually yeah. gain proficiency in multi, uh, um, martial weapons. So it'll be a, an interesting uphill for you if you play at level one and two with your with your build. Yeah, at level one and two, I might be relying on my cantrips and first level spells mm -hmm. a little bit and letting my steel defender do most of the brunt work while yeah. I hang back. But we're getting there and it's going to be good. Okay, so let's look at what we have when we get to level three and actually become a proper battlesmith. Like all artificers, you get proficiency in a set of tools. By default, this is smith tools, but you probably took that already, so you might get to pick another set of tools. The other thing is just like all other artificers, you get a set of spells that are always prepared for you. These level up with you, so you get two first level spells, two third level spells, and so on and so on, uh, up to fifth level spells. And in the case of the Battlesmith, I think there's going to be some really key ones that we're both going to be relying on. The most notable, I think, is that we get some of the Paladin Smite spells, but we also both get Shield. Yeah, and Shield is going to be key for, uh, for protecting yourself as a Battlesmith. Now, the other thing that you're going to get is the Battle Ready trait, which is going to give you a couple of benefits at level 3. First of all, you're going to be proficient in martial weapons, but you also get the ability to use your intelligence instead of strength or dexterity when you are making attacks with a magic weapon. Now this is key with some of the other artificer abilities because you're going to be able to use your infusions to make the weapon that you're wielding magical if it isn't already. So I, I think that that's a really important element of, of making this work because neither of us have our strength or dexterity as our highest stat. We're not using that to attack with though. No. Also at third level, you're going to gain the most important thing about the Battlesmith, and that is your Steel Defender. This is a mechanical creature that aids you in battle. The Steel Defender acts on your initiative count and goes immediately after you in combat. It can move and take reactions, but you have to use a bonus action on your turn if you want it to attack or do anything else. Otherwise, it just takes the dodge action. Now, the Steel Defender has its own stat block, which is presented in the rulebook. But the stat block does have some elements like its hit points, its attack bonus, and its damage bonus, which scale based on both your level or your proficiency bonus. So it is able to make its own attack, which is kind of this force damage dealing melee attack. Um, it can also heal itself up to three times per day, but it also gains a reaction. When the defender uses its reaction for deflect attack, it imposes disadvantage on an attack with, from a creature that is within five feet of it as long as that attack is against something other than the Steel Defender. In, in both cases, the Steel Defender is a great tool to run interference, make attacks with its force-empowered Ren, which does 1d8 plus your proficiency modifier damage. So it's a, a decent damage-dealing attack. Um, and it can also protect yourself or protect your allies by imposing disadvantage on key attacks as they come in. Um, as we said before, it can heal itself, but you can also heal it with mending, and you can rebuild it if it's destroyed with one minute of work. I think the most fun part about the Steel Defender is you get to choose its appearance. So what is your what is your Warforged Artif Artificer Steel Defender going to look like? I imagine that my Warforged is attempting to build another Warforged. <laughs> So I have a mini me that's like <laughs> half finished. So like I'm the cool looking Warforged, but I have like a C-3PO looking dude next to me <laughs> who is my steel defender. And he's a little bit more intense than C-3PO was. But uh, yeah, I picture myself building a variant version of myself as my steel defender. You, you know, the thing is, the steel defender is a medium sized creature. So it could just be another you yeah. in appearance. I, I love that. That... It, that, that you can actually run some really interesting tricks with that. 
Yeah, if the DM allows me to play around with that, there yeah. are, there's some there's a lot of fun to be had. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm going to go with the, the classic mechanical hound. I'm really into kind of the, um, you know, the, the robo dog kind of aesthetic. And I think that'll be kind of cool with the way that I play the character. So also at level three, we're going to get a few infusions. You get to choose four infusions, but you only get to have two active. So what were the four you chose and which two are you mostly relying on here? Okay, so with my Artificer, there's a really good case to be made that I could take the repeating shot infusion to give me a plus one bonus to attack rolls with my gun, make it a magical gun. And technically speaking, if I took that, I wouldn't need gunner because it lets you ignore the loading and ammunition properties. So we could flip things around, but I don't actually think I need that. So I'm just going to go with the um, enhanced magic weapon, and that's going to be my go-to. going to have my magic gun keep that going the whole time yeah. um for my other infusions um i think i'm going to keep things pretty simple for me i'm just going to take replicate magic item and get goggles of night um the other two infusions i'm probably going to pick up the armor infusion now and i might pick up the mind sharpening infusion but i'm never going to use them <laughs> so right yeah I also picked up um, Mind Sharpener and Enhanced Arcane Focus. Those are the two that are kind of there in case I decided that I wanted to be more spellcasty, mm -hmm. but I'm probably not going that way. The two that I'm going to be relying on are the Enhanced Weapon and Enhanced Defense. Now with the Enhanced Weapon, that's just going to make me better at eventually getting into those front yeah. lines and smacking people with my hammer. But the enhanced defense with um, everything else I have going on, being the Warforged and, uh, and taking the half plate, I already have an AC of 19, which is going to be pretty awesome, especially with the use of shield. So if I'm trying to get... 19 AC at level 3, which you can bump up to level to 24 with a reaction? Yeah. Yeah, that's tasty. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so now I'm standing next to my steel defender and uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to hit me. So beyond that, there's not too much that you're going to be able to choose as your Artificer at third level. Um, one of the great things about all Artificers is that you prepare your spells from everything else on the Artificer spell list, uh, but you only do get to pick two cantrips. So for me, I'm going to be taking um, Guidance and Mending as my first two, and then probably the, the biggest spell I'm going to rely on is going to be Fairy Fire. That's going to be my go-to because I want to get that tasty advantage on my attack rolls with my gun. I also took Fairy Fire and Mending, but I took Ray of Frost kind of just as a fallback, especially at those early levels mm. where I'm not going to be able to be up front and center with everything going on with my character. So Ray of Frost gives me a way to fall back and still deal out some damage. Because you're going melee, do you think that you would take something like Booming Blade or Sword Burst or Green Flame Blade for the first couple levels and then maybe retrain that out? Um, those those are something that I might consider, but uh, yeah, at later levels, they're going to become less less important. Yeah. So with that, let's rock it all the way through Tier 2 and level our Artificers up to level 10. We're going to get a lot of stuff in the process of doing this, um, so we're going to kind of take it in phases, Yeah. I think. Along our way to level 10, we're going to get two main features from our subclass. We're going to get extra attack, which is I think is going to be just clutch for both of our characters. Yeah. And you're also going to get Arcane Jolt, which allows you a number of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier to deal a little bit of extra damage when you hit with an attack or to cause a little bit of healing as well. And what's cool about this is that you can apply this on whether your attack hits or your Steel Defender's attack hits. We're going to gain two feats or ability score increases within that time. So for my character, this is where things start to turn up. My first feat choice, I took heavily armored. So now with my strength score that I did boost and my heavily armored feet, I get a plus one to strength now making it appropriate for me to wear full plate armor. Now my other feat choice that I'm going to take is Sentinel. And the reason why I'm taking Sentinel is because this is going to play really well with my Steel Defender's Deflect Attack ability. Now when I run up and I'm standing next to my Steel Defender and we are attacking a creature, that creature, when it's their turn, has to choose which one of us it's going to attack. If it attacks me, it has to do so with disadvantage because of the reaction from my Steel Defender. <laughs> if it attacks the Steel Defender, I get an extra attack against that creature. <laughs> so it's a losing battle now. You have to choose which one of us you're going to attack. Either way, you have a problem that you're facing fighting me. 
Nice. I really like that combination. Um, for me, I'm also going to take two feats. I'm not going to worry about ability score increases yet either. Um, I have a higher intelligence at the gate, so I'm okay with staying at 18 intelligence to get my feats. I'm going to take um, as my first feat sharpshooter mm -hmm. because the if I'm using a musket, that's got a really low range, 40 feet or 120 feet, so I really want to get that range, but I also want to get that minus 5 to hit, plus 10 to damage. The other feat that I'm going to take, though, um, to offset this is Fighting Initiate so that I can get the Archery Fighting Style for a plus 2 bonus to my attack rolls. Now, I might be tempted to do a plus just bump my intelligence up to 18 here. Mm -hmm. um, I think you could make the argument either way. Um, if either or, I think I want both of those things. I'm going to bump my intelligence up in the next bracket though. I yeah. think. So next now we come to the infusions that we took at level 10. Now for me, I'm still going to be relying on having the magic gun, which at level 10, um, having the enhanced uh, weapon, it goes up to a plus two bonus. So this is a big deal because you want to keep that keep that magical weapon going. But I'm going to be able to have a couple more in here. And this is where I'm probably going to trade out the replicate magic item for the goggles of night and get me some new boots. Oh. Winged boots. So now you are flying with yes. your musket, blasting yes. people. Yes. Oh, that's good. Well, my dog eats them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beyond this, I think I'm also going to go with the Helm of Awareness, so I have advantage on initiative checks. Obviously. And then finally, I'm also going to pick up the Spell Refueling Ring, because I really want that extra third level spell slot for myself. We'll talk about that in a moment when we get, when we get the spells. Why? So with my infusions, I'm also going to replicate a magic item, and I'm going to take the Cloak of Protection. Keep in mind that I am using a shield as well. So I have my shield, my Warhammer. I'm now wearing full plate and I have the Cloak of Protection. I have enhanced my armor mm -hmm. with another infusion, and I'm also gonna take the Repulsion Shield. Okay, so you got full plate, so that's AC 18. Yeah. It's now plus two full plate because of your infusion, so that's AC 20. You're using a shield that is a plus one shield because it's a Repulsion Shield, so that's AC 23. You're a Warforged, so that's AC 24. And you're wearing a Cloak of Protection, so that's AC 25. That's AC 25, and I still have shield in my back pocket. <laughs> We're not even getting in. There's there's more here. but So again, with, that, with my companion next to me, and it having to either attack me with disadvantage or me get an extra attack on it, with my weapon that has a plus 9 to hit, uh, I'm, I'm going to be dealing damage a lot. Maybe not as much as your character, but I'm way harder to hit. Yeah, because your Steel Defender can impose disadvantage on attacks. Yes. Oh, man. So, disadvantage on attacks against me, AC 25, and I'm hitting relatively hard. I'm not the greatest damage dealer out mm -hmm. there, but I'm hitting hard enough. And uh, with my multi-attack and my Steel Defender, I'm doing fine on the front lines. All right. So, with all that in mind, what are you going to pack for second and third level spells? What are, what are the kind of the key tools in the toolkit? I took some classics like web and heat metal, but I okay. also took enlarge reduce, which <laughs> I just think is going to be fun to play with yeah. as a character. Um, you can be large and in charge. Yeah. Yep. For third level spells though, this, this is a key element of my build. I took haste. So did I. <laughs> I'm going to haste myself. So now I'm smacking an extra time in, in combat, but I'm also getting a, a bonus to my AC. What is your AC now? So 25, if I haste myself, 27, and I can cast shield on top of that. So you can have a 32 AC. Yeah. And we're not done yet. <laughs> we're not done yet. So, uh, sorry, sorry DMs out there. I'm, I'm breaking the Battlesmith for your players. So, so we looked this up. You're level 10. Yeah. So um, one of the highest attack bonuses I could find going, going through the monster manuals is a challenge rating 10 cloud giant for a, a, of level appropriate. A challenge rating 10 cloud giant has a plus 12 attack bonus. So this means it can only hit you if it crits you. And since you have your steel defender to impose this advantage on its first attack, between the steel defender and shield it can't like it's very unlikely to actually hit you and and here's the last piece of this the repulsion shield seems like yeah i get a plus one shield but why the repulsion how is that useful if any creature tries to hit me with multi-attack 
and they do hit me with their first attack, yeah. I reaction repulse them away. And now if they use their movement to get up to me that turn, they can't use that second attack. And if they do decide to go for the for for your little clone, you're just going to smack them an extra time. Exactly. With Sentinel. Oh, exactly. That's so tasty. Um, I don't know if I can do quite as well as that on that kind of combo, but I will say at this level, I have a musket that hits for a D12 plus seven damage with a plus 14 to hit. I'm going to haste myself and I'm going to take the sharpshooter penalty. So now I'm going to make three shots at a plus nine to hit. That's still good. Which is, I think you said that your character's has a plus yes. nine to hit. Yeah. So my accuracy, even with the sharpshooter penalty, is just as high as yours. Yeah. But except I'm doing D12 plus 17 damage. Yeah. So so your so these are the this is the beauty of the two builds that we're creating. You're up in the air while your steel defender is blocking. Yeah. And you're blasting from the sky. My character's up front and center and nearly impossible to hit. Yeah. They're, I, they're great. Yeah. These are great. And then in most cases, I'm going to be using my regular bonus action to just command the Steel Defender to attack. Um, so get a little bit of extra damage from that as well. Um, for other spells beyond haste, I'm probably going to bring Revivify and Dispel Magic. And for second level spells, I'm going to bring Invisibility, because I think that that could be really clutch. Yeah. Um, uh, especially because I could cast Invisibility on myself instead of haste giving myself advantage on attack roll on, on, on an attack roll or just hiding around like being flying and invisible it's not improved invisibility though so I'm not going to have that permanent advantage happening yeah. that's where I would still default down to just fairy fire if I needed it I'm also going to take web too so I can restrain targets I mean, and it's get great. advantage that way yeah. the, the thing is that like even outside of the crazy builds we're talking about having some great utility spells yeah. in the package invisibility is great if you're doing an infiltration mission yeah. uh, and web is just great for battlefield control and you still want those in your package mm -hmm. um beyond that i think the only other um sort of spell that i am going to bring with me for utility is going to be enhance ability um just because it, it's such a useful spell to just be able to say yep yeah, you have advantage on all your ability checks related to that ability score uh, so it does help me be a little bit more of a team player in that respect yeah yeah so now we're going to move up to level 16, another big jump. We're going to gain some extra features and our characters are going to become more ridiculous. Let's take a look at what we get. So moving up to level 16, we're both going to, we're going to be able to take feats at level 12 uh, and level 16. For me, um, at level 12, I'm just going to max out my intelligence score. And at level 16, it really doesn't matter too much, I feel. Artificers have proficiency in constitution saving throws. So I could take Warcaster here. I could take Lucky here. I could take any other sort of... I, I consider taking Piercer. This really feels for me like a wild card. Like it, it's where I'm going to leave that feed open and decide what it is based on how the campaign goes. I'm not too worried about that. Um, and also I have to say the same thing about my infusions. Uh, past level 16, you do get one more infusion slot open. Um, so I'm probably just going to work on either on infusions that are going to increase my armor class or increase my defenses in some way, just because I am a bit of a target flying up there in the sky. So if I do get shot, I want to be able to defend myself a little bit. Totally. Yeah. On our way to level 16, we're also going to get improved defender at level 15, which is going to add some really important abilities to our defender, especially for my build. This is going to be pretty key. The extra healing or damage of the of the jolt that the defender has goes up to 4d6. It also gets plus two to its own AC. And most importantly for my build, when it uses its deflect attack, the attacker takes 1d4 plus my int mod in force damage. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, so now we have that sentinel deflect attack option going. So you're going to damage either way. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So for my feats on the way here, I'm not done yet. We're still, we still got some building to do. I need to max out some stats. So the first one, I'm just going to take a plus one to con and a plus one to int. Okay. And on my last one, plus two to int. So we both end up with characters that have an 18 con and a 20 intelligence. Yeah, which means... It feels real good. It I'm feels just, real yeah, tough. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. smacking people with plus 12 now. Yeah. So yeah. even that, like, yeah, it's, it's off the chain. 
Yeah, it's a it's a really nice catch up as as well because I feel like you know one of the nice things about the artificer is because you do get those magic items that augment your mag you're guaranteed to get a magic item that boosts your attack rolls. Yeah. So you can kind of afford to lower your uh, your intelligence and not max it out right away because you get that to kind of compensate for it. Um, I also think what's really key with both of our builds is that we do have a, some attunement slots open still. Yeah. Because you never know what nice treats your dungeon master is going to give you along the way. And so if if you do manage to find like a better suit of armor or a cloak of displacement or maybe, you know, you manage to get that staff of power. <laughs> if I got a staff of power, it doesn't seem like it belongs on this character, but that's also going to give me another plus two AC. And for my infusions, I uh, also am going to build myself a ring of protection to add to my cloak of protection. Keep in mind that this means not only is my AC now resting at 26, <laughs> that's before haste and before shield, but that also means I get a plus two to all my saving throws. That's actually really worth considering because I, th I think that one of the things that you can often see happen with a character with a very high AC is that their saving throws become the target. And so it's nice to get the Cloak of Protection and the Ring of Protection um, and also, eventually, the Artificer does get a bonus to their saving throws equal to the number of items they've attuned to. So you will end up with a very tough character. That is the idea. This Steel Defender. Who's really the Defender here? Is it me or is it my companion? Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the, the key thing. This character just builds on itself so well. Yeah. Yeah, I think for my character, you end up with something that actually feels like a mechanical ranger. Yeah. Um, which I really like. It, um, it, it, it is kind of this like weird halfway, like not a ranger, not not a ranger. It's, I would say with this character, it's everything you wish the Beastmaster was. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get that vibe. You're, you're yeah. flying around with a musket. You're blasting people. You're hasting yourself. You have the steel defender eating people out there on the yeah. battlefield. It's, it's iconic. We actually have two very different builds, yeah. but very iconic. These are, these are almost the two different amazing ways that you can go. Mm -hmm. And um, when it comes to spells at this point... I actually am not really relying on my spell casting all that much. Yeah, the Artificer 4th level spells leave a little bit to be desired, but I do think that Summon Construct is a good spell to pack here. Um, because in both, in both of our cases, the Construct that you summon puts another body on the board, and it does pretty good damage. There is the argument to be made that that extra damage is more valuable than the AC bonus, and... The way that it stacks up against even the personal output of my character, it is kind of worth it. Yeah. So it, it, it it's it's a bit of a toss up. Um, evaluate the situation. Sometimes it is worth having that extra body on the board because haste can be a little bit punishing when it goes down. If your concentration on haste gets broken, you do lose a turn. Yeah. I, so it can suck. With my spells, I didn't take anything phenomenal here, but I took I, I, I leaned into the utility of my character. Mm -hmm. I went with Arcane Eye and Fabricate. Yeah, I would take both of those too. And th those are really just like Arcane Eye, imagine me sending like a little mechanical drone of my eyeball to go mm -hmm. spy. Or Fabricate just felt on brand, and I love the idea of my artificer being able to, to whip up some sort yeah. of item. So I was going more for flavor and theme with those choices, but I do think... If I have my Steel Defender in the middle, the Construct and me on either side, um, that's a wall. We're creating a wall. Yep. If I'm in a party with, like, you know, some squishies in the back, don't worry, guys. I got you. Now, if you're setting out to build a Battlesmith, keep in mind that these are not the only two options. We, we looked at a kind of cool Rangery Musket build and a Leaning Into Defense yep. build. But I think that we could give an honorable mention to playing something like a gnome who rides their steel defender. Yes, uh, this would be a case where you might even want to consider taking mounted combatant. The only reason why this doesn't work as well as you would hope it was is that mounted combatant only gives you advantage on targets that are smaller than your mount. And the steel defender is a medium sized creature. So the vast majority of the time you're not going to be able to benefit from that. But you could still be a gnome on a big mechanical ho on a mechanical pony uh, riding around with a lance and that could be pretty cool 
Yeah, I think that there's a lot of options here and also a lot of different ways that you can go with your infusions and your spell choices. And that's really what I think we like about yeah. the Battlesmith is you and I just made the same subclass but ended up with two completely different characters. Yes, they're, they're going to feel very different in play despite having pretty similar infusions, pretty similar spell selection, and really all that you do is you just vary which ability score was important, what equipment was important. It's 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 a fun concept. I really like mm -hmm. the Artificer for what it adds for flavor and themes for the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I think I think this is really cool, and I, I I'm really tempted to make this one of the next characters. It's between this and a Blade Singer for the next character I play. I mean, I was absolutely a hundred percent fixed on playing a bard for my next long-term character. Yeah. But the more I've looked into the Artificer, the more I think it, it just keeps creeping yeah. higher and higher on my list. I still have some misgivings with the Artificer overall, um, but definitely looking at the Battlesmith, I've warmed up to it. I think that there's a lot of... For, first of all, it's unequivocal that you have the damage, the tankiness, if you want it, to build a character that is much closer, really, to something that feels more like a ranger or a paladin than something that is a wizard. And I think that that was the thing that colored my initial impression of the Artificer, is that you actually get something that is more of a melee combat character that is using arcane magic to support them. They're much closer in that respect uh, to their more martially oriented counterparts than they are to something like a sorcerer or a wizard, which I think was a little bit of a mindset change for me to look at uh, coming into this. I think you and I uh, approach this at different levels. I know that you mm. you went in saying, I don't know about the artificer, it feels half-baked. Yeah. And I went in kind of already loving it, but... <laughs> I, everything that I've seen from it and all the builds that I've played around with have just made me love it more. It's mm -hmm. It's got to be, in my opinion, it's it's probably in my top... It's definitely in my top five classes that I would play in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. I think that when a class inspires you with a lot of great options and you can see within even characters that take the same subclass different ways to make that character, that is a big strength of the design. Because I, I think that for a lot of other subclasses out there, there's many that don't have this kind of flexibility behind yeah. them in, in, the, in the different directions you can go. So, you know, that's, that's, but that's kind of the thing. The, the Artificer is very much uh, the self-made uh, hero. Uh, they get to build themselves up and they are as individual as the creations that they make. Because if nobody else is going to build you up, then you've got to build yourself up. And what better way to do that than being an Artificer? So this has been a look at how to play a Battlesmith in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Tell us about the Battlesmiths that you've created in the comments below. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube and elsewhere, please consider supporting our channel by following the links in the description below. And don't forget to check out our live play Shadows of Drakenheim, which airs Tuesday nights at 6pm Eastern on Twitch. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we have plenty more build guides for the other character classes in D&D right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the dungeon. dungeon.